Okay, the question is, can we use um, digital options to still be constructivist and student-centered? Constructivist meaning that we're allowing the students to construct their own understanding, and student-centered meaning the students are directly involved in their learning process. And I would argue that yes, we can use all kinds of digital tools to do this online. So I'm going to show you some of those tools or a way to set up your class with some of those tools that can help you do this. So, big picture of an online course. Um, and so I have taught this class both traditionally and flipped. So this is my Bio 100 class. So in a traditional approach, I divide learning into two sections. Content attainment is when the students are learning what you want them to learn. And then concept application is when the students have built some kind of conceptual understanding and they're now going to apply it into some new um, situation or way of using the knowledge. Uh, so that they totally understand it. And so in a traditional approach, you might have content attainment where they come to class and you lecture to them, hopefully not, but you're doing student-centered activities, and they're learning the material for the first time. And then after class, you might assign a homework assignment that they're going to do to apply that material. In a flipped classroom, we just shift it, right? So they do the content attainment through like video lectures or textbook readings or what I use are called interactive tutorials where they learn the material. And then in class, we do the concept application activities together as a class. Um, if you were going to do it completely online, you would just put both of them in an online format. And so I'm going to show you both of those, but what I want to um, emphasize is that I use what's called the 5e learning cycle in all the formats, flipped, traditional, or online. And that is that I engage the students first in something exciting, then I have them explore the information by building their own understanding. Um, don't worry about the think mirrors, that was for my students. And then I have them explain, and then we explain, we introduce terms, we clarify the content. And then in the concept application, they're going to elaborate or apply the content to novel situations to build conceptual understanding because we found that students often become situationally, situationally compartmentalized with the material where it only applies to the situation did in class. We want to make sure that that's not the case. And then evaluate, so formative and summative uh, testing. All right, so I'm going to show you an example. This is actually completely online. This is what I've done with my class for this semester. But it shows you how you can do either the content attainment or the concept application in a way that's constructivist, in a way that students are exploring um, the information before they're being told. So I'm using this activity, Jack the Ripper. I'm going to go through it really fast, um, but it'll give you the basic structure. So these are my learning outcomes for this activity. I want the students to be able to explain the unique differences in our DNA that help differentiate us from others, to draw the process of DNA replication and explain the purpose of each component to contrast the three historical hypotheses of DNA replication, to construct the process of PCR using knowledge of DNA replication, and then to predict the outcomes of PCR, analyze short and repeat out outputs, and determine differences in individuals, and calculate the probability of a particular STR profile. So let me pull us out of here and go ahead and show you um, my learning, or my, my activities. Let me pull this over. Okay, so here is my Jack the Ripper activity. So this is part one. So this is the content attainment. So I'll show you as if you were a student. Okay, so they come upon this. I don't know why the picture's not working, but this is my activity. So it's Terror in Whitechapel, and I explained that Jack the Ripper was a killer, and that he had several, they had several leads, but they didn't have forensic evidence at the time. So it was impossible to solve this case. But given modern technology, could we solve this case? And then you can see, I've set this up as a quiz in my Canvas class. You can do it the same way in Learning Suite. And I ask them a question, so they have to pause and think about it. So this is my Engage, this is my Engage, and then this is my Explore. So with today's technology, using DNA, what are we looking for? What might we get from the DNA? Whose DNA do we need? And they have to list things here. So they would list it as a student, obviously not like this. And we spot check them to make sure that they're stopping and thinking. And then you can see that I've given them some explanation in the next question. You can get DNA from just about anywhere. And whose DNA do we not want? Well, we want the murderer, we want the victim, we want any suspects. And then it asks them, if we obtain DNA, what in the world are we looking for? Why is DNA helpful? So again, they'd have to answer this question, right? And then I give them a little bit more explanation. Likely you answered that we can compare DNA between different individuals. So then the next question is, do we look in the coding regions of the DNA or the junk regions? And they have to answer that. And then I think I, I give them some information. You might be thinking we look in the coding regions, but let's think more about this. Likely the coding regions are much more conserved. And then I introduce short tandem repeats, which is what they're going to use. Okay, and then I ask them, how might you do this? And I have them come up with ways that they might replicate DNA. Um, based on what they learned about DNA replication in a previous lesson. 
and then we introduce some DNA replication. So this is the measles and install experiment. If you're not familiar with that, it's no big deal. Um, but they predict where they might find the bands of DNA in this experiment. So they have to actually go through and predict where they might find them. And then I've given them a little tutorial that I made using Explain Everything, which I have another link for if you want to learn how to use that program. And they watch it. So you can just see it's embedded in the program. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but I just talk about um, so we've taken bacteria, the experiment. We've them, I draw on it. Um, heavy and half of them is light. Does that make sense? So I'm just okay, drawing and labeling the diagram. In, this one would be a heavy light. So once I've done this and they've watched the video, then I ask them what's actually supported by the data. And then I tell them that's right, and this is how DNA is replicated. So this is another tutorial that I did in Explain Everything, where I'm drawing things all over the diagram. Um, I've typed in things. Anyway, so they watch a little video. We review, and that's the end of their content attainment. So they, now they know how DNA is replicated. They know what STRs are. They know that they're helpful in solving crimes. So once they've done that, let me go back up and show you. So that's a content attainment activity that is student-centered, makes the students actively engaged in the process of learning. So here's my uh, concept application activity. And again, this is a totally online class, and so they're doing them both online. Um, but here, we're going to use that information, and we're going to solve a forensic mystery. So they go in, and it said in the Jack the Ripper activity, we learned about these STRs. So now let's use them. This is a little bit of information about STRs and how they work. Okay, and that they are genetically inherited. So then we're here. We've been called to the scene in Provo Canyon. There's a dead body. Um, it's, she's been dead for three to five days. She's not wearing shoes. She's missing some fingernails. What are we going to do? And there's crime scene photos if they choose to look at them. And then we look at um, other crime scene photos that are a little more benign. And we're asking them, okay, so how many crime scenes do we have? We give them back informa background information. And they say, oh, well, we've got three crime scenes. We've got, whoops, the car, the house the where the, the body was found up the canyon etc so they have to think about it and then what evidence are we looking for well, we're looking for dna right where might we find that we might find it in she was actually assaulted so we might find it under her fingernails we might find it other places and i'm not going to mention what other evidence should we collect they have to answer that um where are we going to find the dna evidence so under her fingernails etc and then i walk them through a brief tutorial so in these concept application questions, I ask them first to think about it, I walk them through a tutorial, and then I ask them to summarize what they learned based on their own thinking and what I've told them, recap, what have you learned? So I, do, I follow that same format each time. Ask them to think about it, explain it, and then have them synthesize what we've learned. So same thing, we continue on, here's the crime scene, this is what we've seen, here's all the STRs, they have to open them and look at them and try to figure out what's going on. I give them a few hints and then I ask them to identify who the culprit is. But then I'm going to walk through it with them and show them this is how you do it, this is how you analyze it, and then ask them to recap, right? What did you learn from that? So if you follow this kind of format, you can make activities, whether you're doing the whole thing online or you're just doing the content attainment online or just the concept application online, that you can make them interactive and constructive where students are discovering the information before you just come out and tell them. And it forces them to be engaged in the learning process.